<laughs> I was getting worried for a minute. It's uh, shining like a diamond. It's like red lightning. We're a little slow getting up this morning. Well, actually we got up pretty early. We're just moving slow. But we're in it. We got my bear right here up the ridge. Just hanging up here in a tree from last night. About two or three hundred yards. Three hundred yards up the hill from us. I'm going to take that meat and I'm going to go and put it in a, a snowbank. Bury it. Hide. And then uh, we're going to get on the search for another bear. See if we can get one more up here in these tippy top mountains before we uh, have to go back down. We're just going to keep our eyes peeled this morning. Getting a little breakfast and a little water in us. It was a rough, it was a rough climb yesterday to get here. And then it was a rough hunt, just beating over there, getting the bear, and then packing them out last night was brutal. But, Is right across from me. The llamas are going nuts. Saved again this morning from a grizz munching because of the llamas. Uh, he was in camp. He said he's texting us, and a grizz just showed up a hundred yards away. But the llamas noticed and started screaming, barking. He said they made alien noises. What well, can you officially tell me? What those are? Yeah, they're doing their alarm bark, especially with bears. They go circle with this alarm bark so I'm not sure what scared Ryan more the Grizz or the the llamas going berserk but it probably it probably saved him because like you said he said in his message that the Grizz was right across the creek <laughs> from him and uh, the llamas went berserk and, and then Ryan had to defend his life down there <laughs> Ryan was going to come up today but he texted and said I don't think I can leave camp I'm bent down. <laughs> Yesterday, he said one almost stepped on him. Over here, when he was glassing, he's probably 200 yards from camp. 300 yards from camp. When he, he had one almost walk on top of him. And then this morning, he's like, got 100 yards from camp. He told us uh, he fired two shots to try to scare it. And get her to go away and then he said it ran up the hill and he 
got a little video of it running up the hill. So, he, uh, he talked about switching places with me, but honestly, that's a little more grizz action than I really want. He can, he can, oh he's got it. the lawns can be the bear bait. You gotta think the grizzlies, especially where we're at, are not running into llamas every day. <laughs> so when they see those things and then they hear that noise, now the problem is they can, I've heard, they can get a little more accustomed to them. So that dude might be back for round two once he's like, you know, I saw four tied up <laughs> animals. They kind of scared me at first, but I'm a little hungry, so I'm going back. As long as he keeps them really, those llamas really tight together and close to his camp, he'll be he'll be good. Well, those birds are already going crazy over there. You can hear them just going nuts over those carcasses. This trip has been a really, um, it's been a really great trip. We, we're about eight days in, seven days, eight days into this this particular hunt. I knew this was going to be an epic one. There's <laughs> when you involve when you involve those two, it usually is is pretty epic. You know, one of the things I knew that would happen was, you know, going with with Ryan and Brian. Brian's really has moved up and upped his game since we first ran into each other at the BHA rendezvous back several years ago. And it's been great watching their videos and it's been fun to be on this hunt, but I knew this was not gonna be no joke. And it's lived up to every bit of the hype. Last night, of course, Brian shoots this freaking bear. We're in this giant basin, okay, let's just picture this. And we're on the right side of this basin rim. We keep backed up 2,000 feet, set our camp up, walk up another six, 700 feet. We glass this bear at the farthest corner of the opposite side of the basin. About six o'clock, we traverse all the way over there, shoot the bear side hill all the way over, and then in the dark side hill all the way back. So, got to bed about one o'clock or so in the morning and we're back at it again today and the weather's gave us a little break today so it's gonna be cooler maybe the bears will be out all day we're gonna give it at least probably one more day up here and uh, but it's been a real adventure as expected especially for early this was a real test for my llamas to get those boys out on a big big backcountry adventure like this in May. Usually my bear hunts are not as remote as this. So it's been, a, it's been a really good learning experience and to learn from these guys how they do things versus the way I do things. Brian and I were talking this morning. You know, it's really nice when you can go with a, with a couple guys that are at that next level and you can just absorb some of their knowledge and Personally, I'm looking forward to the e-scouting um, bear module because I've got so much content from this trip from Brian and from Ryan, how they look at break down mountains, what they're looking for versus what I'm looking for. I think it's going to be, it's really going to be outstanding. I, it's been kind of a side benefit of this trip. I didn't expect that to be the case, but when you're, when you're locked up with three dudes for nine days in the backcountry, you, you tend to kind of see how they do it and how they approach it. And, but yeah, it's been it's really an epic adventure. Well, it's about 12.30. We've been glassing this basin for about four hours. We haven't seen a bear yet. I keep expecting a bear to roll over the top. The bear I shot yesterday came from the other side of this ridge. It just rolled over the top. Boom, he was there. And then we made a play. So any time now a bear 
truck could roll over the top of this. The backside's real timbered. They've been hanging out there a lot. And then, then they roll over the top around 12, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. But the best hunting has been from 5 to 8.30 or so. That's been the best. But that's also weather dependent. We've had a lot of sun. It's been hot. With this overcast day like this, I kind of expect them to be cruising around. Running these ridges and getting into these bottoms and doing their thing. Just because it's nice and cool. But it might be a little too cool. Bears are weird. They like that. They like their temperature zones just right. But uh, not really surprised that we haven't seen anything. Sometimes, sometimes these bears don't even seem to get out of bed until two o'clock in the afternoon. Thing is, when you do see a bear, I mean, when a bear's in an area, he doesn't make any effort to hide. He just does bear things. It's not like a deer that's sort of being discreet and going from cover to cover or watching his back. Like bears just go out on the mountain and be bears. So, I don't know. There's probably not a bear in this basin or we'd have picked him up by now. We're really just hoping a bear rolls into this basin because we've counted six bears in the same basin. All, all along the top and we watched a number of them roll over the top into the basin so the grizzly bear we've watched come from the bottom they come from the bottom and come up the bottom of the cuts and hit the saddles but the black bears we often see them up way at the top and they just roll over the tops and into the this high alpine areas but I'm super happy with the bear I shot Nice, nice big boar. Not massive, but nice. Got all the meat off of him. His hide's really pretty. Ryan's a bear. Red Lightning is just a touch bigger. It's a little bit bigger bear. Older. But both of them were scarred up. Both of them were good bears. We really haven't seen that many giants in this area. We've seen a lot of bears, just not big bears. I think the grizzly bears sort of keep them on their toes, maybe, but yeah. We've been in area, other areas where we've seen some really big black bears, but it's not really about the size of the bear. Back here, it's just about the adventure doing the hard stuff, hunting in country that a lot of people will never see. Dodging grizzly bears is a little unnerving, but there's something cool about just watching one on the hillside right in front of you, or one walk past you. I kind of like it. Well, I was just sitting here, just finished talking, and I have a black bear just spotted up in the rocks and he's making his way down and he's got he's gonna be perfect I gotta find Mark he looks like a really big black bear he, I mean I can't really quite tell but he's got some nice size to him he's a little heavier looking he's got some swagger um, he came over the top through those rocks and he's making his way across. I think we're gonna kill him. I think we're gonna kill him. And keep an eye on him here. Mark is coming up the hill. He's right behind me. Got him figured out. Hmm, this bear was beelining it straight down. Now he's turning around. Kind of beating.
same spot we were yesterday, but he's making a beeline for the ridge for some reason. He came down and we think he may have got a crest R track from packing out the bear, or he got a whiff of the carcass from the bear earlier this week. But he kind of spooked him and he's kind of moving up the ridge and we got our eyes on him, but he's outpacing us right now, so we're gonna probably have to sit down and just see what he does. And he stopped up, I'm looking at him right now, he's just with my naked eye, he stopped on the ridge, just standing there. He's looking around, so maybe he'll come back down and give us a play. We'll see here in a minute. The wind's perfect for us, so we just need to wait him out. And see what he does. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think he's he's decided that he likes something here. But he's something's bothering him. Now he's just scratching his back. <coughs> He's tearing up that bush. Here he comes. Brian, he's coming back down. Yep. He's gonna he's gonna do it.
couple of drainages got to within range of where this old carcass was. And this bear just never acted like he was ready to commit. He went down to the carcass. It was a little thick down there. There's, there's a band of trees kind of right down there by it. He got right to the carcass. We were in range. We should have been in range. And he just, he just didn't give us much time. He didn't even hang out that carcass. We thought we had all kinds of time. We thought he would stay on the carcass now that he found it. But he didn't. He took one look at that thing. Started backing up this canyon. And he gave us a few minutes of possibles. And then... And then he just slips up here into the timber. And we crossed a couple drainages over here to see if we could get eyes on him again. And, um... Nothing. And he, the whole time we saw him, he was just on edge, it seemed like. So... That bear got away, so I hate it when that happens, but we should have had that bear. <sighs> We've hammered that basin. We chased that black bear in there and he gave us the slip. You could tell that bear knew something was... He was I think he was he, smelling us. Yeah, he was on to something. He didn't... He, he, he came and he hit our trail and he was like, whoa, because he was just coming down the hill and he was backed up and then he went and looked around and sketched out so it's probably time to give this basin a vacation time to go to greener pastures we have a long hike ahead of us down the mountain with heavy packs just got mine all loaded mark's got his loaded and uh, we got the meat out of the tree meat's all in there camp's all in there it's going to be a burner today. Oh, well. It's a price to pay to come up here and hunt these places. There's Mark. He's looking good. He's got a heavy pack. We both do. I think his might be heavier than mine. And he's mid-50s. Crushing it. <clears throat> Wasn't that bad. Feet are a little it's the feet, hot. Huh? Feet. Feet are hot. Yeah. They're not hurting. They're, the tape's working good. They're just hot. We're off, Mark. How many black bears have you seen? Not at the top. None. Zero. It's a big fat zero. Zero. Like zero. We've seen grizzlies in every drainage that we've been in. And every drainage. The thing with grizz is we even see them on the top, too. And, yeah, they're, and they're just... Man, I've never yeah. seen a place that just... 1,200 grizzly stuff is a bunch of BS. <laughs> Those There's people are, the grizzly... Count. Whatever that count, they need to come out and hunt with us. <laughs> yeah, there's... There's no shortage of grizzlies. There is no we should, way. You should be able to hunt them at this point. It's ridiculous. There's 1,200 grizzlies in this freaking basin. Yeah, it's insane. I spent a lot of time studying when I did my east scouting. I studied fire ages and how long the timber will stand versus spruce versus pine. And, you know, it's, it's good information to know and spend some time with because the last thing you want to do is get in some place and it's just matchsticks. Like that over there. That'd be, and, and it could be it's the hell trying to hunt those places. At, when you look at aerial photo views, you'll see the timber stand. The best way to tell if it's standing is look for the shadows. So if you can see the casting of the shadows on the mm -hmm. ground, you know it's all standing. Well, then you look and you say, oh, that photo's 2014. Well, a lot can happen in six years. Yeah, how much of, of a burn? Look at the trail we had for the first 10 miles. Yeah. Men made of less stout material would have turned back, Mark. I should have turned back. <laughs> now look at me. Look at the adventure now. Yo. I can say I've been there and I've had to Right at the oasis. <laughs> the only reason that didn't burn is because it's steep as shit. <laughs> Couldn't burn it. Back the bags well, this time I am heading north Left the racks and won't need those where I'm going I, 
mere fact, almost season to itself. You just taking the bare fat just off the pieces of meat that you had. And I'm always thinking of you. Always thinking I could love you more. That onion gives it just enough of the whammy. It's a perfect combination, isn't it? Oh man, and it, it's you know those mountain onions—they've got the the wang to them, mm -hmm. and so when they're cooked up, they're they kind of like add their own spice to it. Burn it all, burn it all, firelight deep in my eyes. Break the news. Heed the call, howling like one of our kind These days, read clearly like a wolf in the snow In some way, I feel you near me, and darling, as long as you know Right, folks i hope you enjoyed the uh last the last episode of this four-part series yep. uh look who i got here i got brad hunt it's about dang time dang it <laughs> so brad is now officially uh joining forces with gritty yep and uh you've done you've filmed he brad's been on a bunch of hunts you guys have seen him and, yep. and he's been podcasting a little bit with me here and there but just been project based here and there for the last little bit and yeah. we've been trying to figure out without moving to utah <laughs> how to make this work and yep. he moved a little north in Utah, and I moved to southern Idaho, so it works out great now. So Brad is still an Idaho resident, and I'm a Utah resident, and we're on the border. Yep. That's where we live, and so Brad's going to be at the house every day uh, working for Gritty. So it's that's exciting. good. Exciting. Uh, what would you think of this episode? It's awesome. You know, usually guys have, yeah. you know, all the spring and the summer to get in shape for their September elk hunts, yep. you know, basically, or their September, their fall October hunts for the mountain, hunts. mountain, western mountain hunts. But um, sometimes these spring hunts sneak right up on you. You know, they're right there. And so uh, it was a great, great trip, though, for Mark to get on with his llamas early, which he mentioned in the film. And they did great. They did awesome. Um, that, the, you know, when you're hunting in grizzly country, yeah, that is just something that's always on your mind. Well, even to go on this trip, I bought a 10 mil. To, to always be packing because I don't hunt in grizzly country much. Right. And so I bought that 10 mil to have it. Has the, Ra the Rasco holster, which I love on, on the Bino Harness. Yep. And then ended up not being able to go. And luckily, you know, with you guys at the llamas. And I mean, you guys are packing still, but who knows what a small pistol is going to do either, you know? Well, people um, chimed in because Ryan and I are both carrying nines, mm -hmm. nine millimeters on the Rasco uh, Kydex holster underneath the Bino Harness. Yep. And the, the you know, we were carrying bear spray on our hip and the nine millimeter and full large caliber rifles. So, you know, people are like, that nine's not big enough. Well, we didn't really pack the nine necessarily to drop yeah. you know, a full grown grizzly exactly. bear. 
Um, you got a lot of lot of rounds in that magazine. We do too. have a lot of rounds. They make a lot of noise, <laughs> and you know, well placed placed round in the eyeball. You know, I mean, yeah. it can it could do the job. Uh, but a lot of people were like, "I'm surprised you're carrying that. You should carry something bigger." We did have three of us all carrying pistols, yeah. all carrying bear spray, all carrying rifles. So we didn't pack that bigger gun. If I was bow hunting, I'd pack my 10 millimeter. Yeah, and, and, and I think thing- that'd be my choice, 10, because honestly, that's what I shoot well. Yeah. That's what carries a lot of rounds. It's what I shoot well. Yep. Well, and the other thing too is, you know, the advantage you guys have is the llamas. They see so super well. They they hear. They're going to alert you when something's there. I mean, Unless you're, you're spiked out at the top of the mountain and the llamas are at the bottom <laughs> of the mountain. that's true. But we made a comment in this film. You know, those grizzly bear, they start at the bottom almost always in all the drainages, and they kind of work their way up. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we didn't run into a lot of them up high. It was down low, and you can see with the with llama camp, I mean, yeah. there was a lot of run-ins. And there was a couple of run-ins Mark had with that big chocolate grizz. While, Mark, while Ryan and I were up there, we just he didn't get any film, and there was no way to incorporate it in the movie. But we basically saw grizzlies every day um, yeah. up there. So it was a. It's. I think the grizzlies are a lot more dense than people think. Oh yeah. But having llamas, you could hear that sound. They picked up on bears and the wolf mm-hmm. long before we did. Like they're like oh, that. Exactly. They're on point. Yeah. Like, they are so weary. That's where I'm looking forward to having a llama of my own. Exactly. Um, in, on my new property out here. But I think, you know, in absence of that, I'm also considering um, a dog. And if you guys have any comments on a good bear dog, a dog to protect camp, you know, I was with Dustin Rowe from um, Backcountry BC and beyond, mm-hmm. or BC Backcountry and beyond. I can never remember. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, we did that moose film. Uh, Tannis and Doran mm-hmm. were were out there guiding me in uh, in Canada, and in camp, Dustin Rowe has this dog named Sitka, and yep. I forget the name of the other one. They're they're like uh, siblings, these two dogs, something like that, and it's a, like a Newfoundland boxer mix, I think is what it was. Right. But these dogs were incredibly handy. He used them for packing a sheep off the mountain. He used, they carried like 30 pounds each or something. Uh, so that's 60 pounds between the two dogs. Plus he had them, they were just on point and they would always protect mm-hmm. against a grizzly bear. And so the guys will go out with the dogs. And I, I really think um, that is the way to go. A dog is so much more alert and on, on than you are yeah. and uh, can get between you and a bear in the case of you just bump into them right around a corner. So if you guys know of any breeders or any dogs or, or, or anything, I'm actually out looking for a dog for that use. Um, and I, I did hear that there were some dogs, some shepherding type dogs or cattle dogs up in Montana right. where these breeders actually breed them specifically for hikers and hunters to have a dog on hand to protect against a bear. Um, some people would be worried about the dog, like scaring off of the, the game you're hunting, right. you know? It was a well-trained dog, though, man. They, I mean, you look at military servicemen that right. use dogs, they, and, they, uh, they know how to work. And I'm no stranger to training training a, a good dog. And so I think that's, that, you know, I watched poor Dustin's dogs. They would, if he said, you know, lay down, they'd lay down and they'd lay down for hours. Yeah. Like when he's on that stock uh, and they didn't get up till they, till they were told, okay, you can get up now. Right. So having having a, a good dog could be a, a good solution for grizzly bear hunting. Absolutely. Give you a lot more confidence out there, bow hunting and stuff, um, and uh, could be useful. So anyway, we just want to thank you for tuning into our series. Uh, it's been fun to bring this to you. Um, you know what? We're super busy right now with yeah. new footage. We're going to bring a new series to you on the mainstream on the YouTube channels here, and uh, hopefully. S- I don't want to commit to any specific <laughs> dates, but we have awesome footage uh, that Brad just returned from hunts with Ryan Lampers and Hillary and pa- and Paley and, and Mark Livesey, And uh, he's got awesome footage of that. We're going to put that series together. But between now and then, if you go out to locals, the gritty dot. Uh, locals.com it's the gritty stealthy community out there and become a supporter it's seven dollars a month or i think it's like seventy dollars for the whole year you'd be supporting us directly so i love that because it does make it so that we're not dependent on sponsors or anything like that we can really just be free 
to talk about whatever gear and things we want. And uh, it works really well for us, for our independence. And, and so if you like what we do and you want extra bonus content, you can go there. We have a cool, some cool film dropping over there here really soon. And then Brad and I are going to start uh, streaming tips and tactics and gear stuff, yep. uh, tests that we're doing at home between different items. And we're all going to put that, we're going to put all that on locals. So if you go out there, uh, we're going to start putting live streaming stuff out there here in the next couple of weeks. Yep on a regular basis. And then Lampers is going to get on there, Ryan, and give you guys some tips on hunting. And then he and Hillary are going to get on and give you tips on, on nutrition and health and, and so on. So all of that is on the gritty stealthy community. So if you want to be, be part of that, just go to gritty.locals.com and sign up, become a supporter. If you don't want to spend the money, the $7 a month, the $70 for the annual, uh, subscription you can just go on there and become a member and not a supporter and then you can kind of see there'll be some things you don't have access to but some things you do have access to and and you can just kind of test it out that way first some some of the content will be restricted and you can't access it but there'll be a lot out there you can and then there's a great community forming over there of like-minded hunters who are sick of social media sick of the garbage and the community is really cool you can share and we want to grow that it's it's still pretty small relatively you know compared to the overall internet but we have a uh, lot of lot of uh, hope that this thing can grow even bigger and be yep. a really cool place for hunters to gather absolutely so all right we told you we were giving away a Leupold rangefinder brand new out of the box Leupold rangefinder to some lucky person who left us a comment and subscribed to our channel and uh, supports the show and we selected that person that winner is Thank you here. Okay, you ready? Rangefinder. Leopold Rangefinder goes to Sheer Will Survival. He wrote uh, Charlie Daniels, American Icon, Great Country Music. Hmm. I think he's referring to my dancing. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many people have hated me on my dancing? My own mother. My uh. my my wife, like they're they're all acting like well, not my wife. I mean, honestly, my wife, I can't keep her hands off me after she saw that scene. But the rest of y'all have bad taste. I got moves. Uh, but anyway, Sheer Wheel Survival, Survival is the winner. I want to thank you all for leaving comments yep. on our YouTube channel. All the comments, first of all, they're awesome. And they, they really help with these algorithms on YouTube and help our channel to grow i'm not very good at marketing my channel <laughs> i just like making the film and dropping each week and having no. the interaction so um maybe i'll get a netflix deal anybody know anybody <laughs> yeah. at netflix <laughs> no <kidding>. me up. <laughs> uh anyway hope you uh hope you continue to leave comments leave a comment on this one let us know what you think and uh subscribe to the channel i'd like to grow that i'd like to break a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube because yep. and we're close i think we got 20k to go yep. but they don't treat you like a real human like a real boy. Until uh, you hit that 100,000. You're like 000. Pinocchio. <laughs> you're like the wooden boy until you reach that 100,000. And then you have like a number you can contact when things aren't going well. Yep. I'm not officially, you know, I'm not officially uh, accepted. No. Nope. But that's also why we have the gritty, stealthy community over on Locals. Because I'm not sure I like the mainstream platforms like um, YouTube. Yep. But uh, it's what we've got and it does reach a lot of people. So anyway, thanks for commenting. We really, really do appreciate all the support. Um, outside of that, it's Christmas season. It so Christmas check out uh, all the sponsors that support us, all the affiliate codes that we have. You know, Peaks, uh, get out there, get some poles and some gators. Check out Initial Ascent. I'm, I'm in love with that backpack. I think it just, uh, I think it's the best pack out there for saving your back and for carrying heavy loads. Check out um, Stealthy Hunt Nutrition, Stealthy Gear, because he's got new glassing pads. Yep, which he's selling out of. Like, they've also cakes. got the new rifle covers that only come as a two piece, not as a three piece. So check out so. the rifle covers, stealthy rifle covers, and uh, again, all of that stuff supports direct. If you need some CBD oil, you need some uh, krill oil, you need some gut health, immune probiotics, all that. They're over at Stealthy, and uh, as always, check out um, Mountain Ops. You can check out. Uh, Black Ovis. Black Ovis. Because a lot of you guys are shopping for hunting gear right now. It's Christmas time. Yep. If you go to Black Ovis, use the code GRITTY. 
it's kind of like your online Cabels, yeah, basically, yeah, but but owned by hunters, like really owned by hunters, a little and, less political, <laughs> yeah, and they're very uh, and it's local. Black Ovis yep, is right here in absolutely. our backyard, and it's owned by our good friend Kendall Card, who also owns the Chris, Crispy Boots distribution arm of uh, Crispy, right here in the United States. And if you use the code Gritty over there, you get a deal and a discount. The other thing I might mention is Iron Mountain, yep, um, Skull hangers um check those out if you got mounts you got a skull you know a deer and elk those are over at black ovis too yep. links are below check it all out thanks for tuning in join us over on locals stay gritty